All right, a hidden object guru here, joined by DM, and we're going to be playing hot new game Narcosis. Uh, I don't know if it's actually a hot. Oh, it's told me it was fully controller supported, but now once we press E to start, well, whatever. I'm happy to play the game with my uh, keyboard instead, but I would have liked some warning. Uh, okay, we we're playing uh, a game we got from Indie Ween, which was a uh, an indie games festival. I know, I don't know all of the people involved, but I follow Indie Gamer Chick, and what they do is they collect a bunch of game codes from different developers and publishers who want to see their games supported, and they just offer them freely uh, to anyone who asks for a code, in exchange for, of course, talking about the game and just making sure the game's profile goes up. And honestly, uh, I've never asked for a game before from one of these, but then I saw one was about underwater horror, and I'm like, I think I know who might like that. <laughs> yep. I think I've got a perfect person for this kind of game. So uh, now we're going to do this. Let's, uh, yeah. let's see. I'm just going to tweak the settings a little. Uh, turn down the music and the uh, sound effects. Should Some I be seeing something in my end? Because I'm not. What are you seeing? I'm seeing a hand reaching for what looks like a record on a shelf. Oh, I thought I turned that off. That's embarrassing. <laughs> now to explore the world of narcosis. So, would you like to explain what nitrogen narcosis is? Um, nitrogen narcosis is uh, when there's. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this Ocean properly. Ocean was And I'm probably going to mess it up because it's been a while. They're breaking uh, new ground, making it's something called, meaningful. It's called, like, the, I guess the, the lingo Mining is when you're suffering from nitrogen and narcosis, you've been, There's you're marked. There's alternatives, but none so uh, And it's just, Clean and it's safe. sort of, it's this kind enough. of lightheaded feeling, Sorry, almost weekend, somewhere between short being short drunk and being high. Oh, really? Or stone. Yeah. Uh, it's happened to me once. Um, and it, ha it happened that that How that deep that were you when it happened? I was, I was at 130 odd feet. And people wonder why I will never go dive. <laughs> but I've, I've, I've been deeper without it happening to me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, you know, who's to say when it'll hit you? Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. But so what happened to me was I just, I was, it was a working dive. Um, and we were setting a mooring on a wreck. Uh, and my job was really just to kind of to stay on the line. Okay. Um, and then this, my buddy and was just, just to be go. clear, that means your job is to just maintain that there is a route from where everybody is working back to the location. Essentially, I'm just hanging out is pretty much okay. what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. And so I'm like checking my depth, checking my air, checking my depth. Che and I just like, that's all I could do. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like total, like complete tunnel vision, essentially. Um, wow. And like very aware of the fact that I am at depth. I am underwater. I am in an environment that wants to kill me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, and I think, it, I think it happened to me again on another dive. Um, and that wasn't deep at all, so I hesitate to conclude that I got narked on that one. I got really disoriented. It was quite dark, um, but again, it wasn't a very deep dive, but I, I felt really weird in the head. Um, yeah, not to the point where it, like, it was dangerous, um, and I was with the dive buddy that I trusted completely, so it wasn't a problem, but that was a very disorienting dive as well. So similar kind of, I guess, like a similar feeling to that time I got narked, but Jesus. anyway. Yeah. So narcosis. <laughs> yes, narcosis. We just did a training. Uh, we just started our training mission and then we, uh, and now we're down beneath the surface of the ocean, which I guess the training mission was a flashback or in a much less likely situation. Uh, we've been teleported straight from a training tank down into the bottom of the ocean. Okay, well, for, for my end, you were just in the water, and now you're adjusting your settings. Okay, so you're... So, a, it's weird, because you're uh, considerably... Uh, I don't know what it is about where your stream is, but, for example, if I open the stream on my phone, it's, like, 10 seconds behind me, but you're, like, 30 seconds behind me. It's very I, strange. Probably more than that. Should I try to reload? 
maybe, yeah, try to reload. Or check to make sure your, um, uh, your stream is all the way to the front of the, uh... Oh, you're underwater. Okay. Yeah. It's weird. The controls are very strange because you're piloting a suit, right? Yeah. And, uh, so you, the mouse lets you look around inside the suit. Okay. Yeah. So I'm so con- Oh, I can use a knife. So if, uh, if fish come at me, oh my god, are they getting fish gutted. <laughs> totally down to gut me some fish. Which so, I feel like would be hard to do underwater because they would, like, wriggle away from you. But, I uh, don't know a lot about these noot suits. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. Um, and is that an acronym for something, or? I don't actually know. Oh, how do you I'll spell it? I'll be honest with you. And, like, newt, N-E-W-T. That's gotta be a, that, I mean, that's gotta be an acronym, right? I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I just... can't answer this question for you. Right. But, like I said, I don't know a ton about these suits and how they work, but I noticed on your console there, you have an oxygen meter. Yeah. And I don't know if that suit would be pumping oxygen or just air. What do you mean? What now? What's the difference? Well, you don't breathe. Just we breathe oxygen. air. <laughs> we Which don't is breathe. only a certain percentage of oxygen, right? Which is like okay, it's eighty percent oxygen, but, but there's also nitrogen. But you've got and nitrogen and some and other helium. stuff in there as well. And so, um, and at depth, oxygen yeah. is Probably toxic. Like there's this thing called oxygen percent. toxicity okay. in diving. Okay. And so that's why when people dive to extreme depths, um, like I'm talking like on scuba equipment, maybe not necessarily oh, something like this, uh, okay. you don't breathe air. You breathe a different kind of mixture. Which, really? yeah, and... And it, and it depends on okay. which Target depth practice. you're going to, which yeah, kind of mixture you are. It's like heavy on the helium. Like if it's, oh, okay. if it's extreme, if it's, yeah, if the depth is quite deep and you're down there for a long time. Because of how it uh, okay. affects your lungs differently? Uh, because how it gets into the blood and what it does in oh, your body. Oh, yeah. okay. It is weird to think that we can breathe helium, uh, like a large helium mixture safely. <laughs> well, not a, it's not just pure helium. I <laughs> know, but I'm just saying, it's like it's this uh, thing we can... Hey, what's the one you can breathe that makes your voice super low? I know that helium is the one that makes your voice super high. What's the one that makes your voice super low? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. There's another one that's just as safe to breathe, but it has the opposite effect on your vocal cords. Okay. I've never heard that. It's not related to diving, so it's not going to... Uh, I'm not expecting you to know. Oh, I think I'm supposed to shoot flares. That's neat. So, but um, a suit like this would have, you're saying it would have different... Uh... I don't, I'm saying I don't know. I just, oh. I thought it was weird that your meter was reading oxygen. Oxygen or, rather than... Rather than whatever... Air. ...mixture you would be breathing. Okay. Because... Because you could still just say air and that would be accurate, right? See, well, this, see this drives me nuts on TV and in movies. When people use oxygen and air interchangeably? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And there's this, I don't know why I remember this so well, there's this episode of CSI Miami. The worst um, show on them, television. One of them is like, he's like in the Everglades or something, I don't know. And from the surface, somebody communicates to him that he has five minutes left of oxygen. <laughs> I'm like, there is so much wrong with that statement, I don't even know where to start. Wow. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to boost across to the other side here. I think I've got a sense of how this works. Yeah, so uh, I, as I understand it, we're working for an energy company okay. looking for uh, natural gas at the bottom of the ocean. And these are the pipelines. I assume something has gone horribly wrong in the facility and now we're supposed to check it out. Okay. But, you know, that's just because that's what every video game is about. <laughs> something has gone wrong, horribly wrong in a facility. Find out what. Like, <laughs> I've just described the plot of 80% of video games. Yeah. Also, I mean, the other 20%, you're the one causing a problem in the facility. <laughs> if, like, those two plot lines are like... Uh, although now I'm reminded of that, uh, that IMDb description I found uh, uh, that was... Uh, that is applicable for 90% of all fiction. A person is doing their job when something goes wrong. 
Yep, that's that's eighty percent of fiction you just described there. I'm intrigued. I know. What a what a captivating premise you have found. Jeez. Hey, there's another guy here. Yay! So with with these new suits, with these pressure thing, and with these because it's pressurized air inside, right? Uh, yeah. There are pressure suits inside? Yeah, you are three kilometers down, so... <laughs> three kilo- Did they say three kilometers down? Uh, I am like the loading screen, that's what it said. Oh, okay, that's what it said the loading screen. Okay, so, um, my question is, is, like, are the newt suits in real life good enough that there's, like, what is the lower limit to how far they can go? Oh my god, I don't know. Okay. I have I no idea. Thought, okay. But this whole three kilometer idea, is that implausible or is that like, is that sci-fi or is this within the realm of plausibility that someone could have two, two. these suits and February then start 2nd. dropping, as you can see, like, we were 50 miles from the epicenter down here and start building. <laughs> but an eight on the Richter I scale say, makes that kind of distance I, I'd like to believe that irrelevant. it's within the realm of possibility. Okay. I don't yeah. know. I can do a quick, you know what? I'll just do some little, some research. For me while we're right now, this. just a little, just a. Just I kind of like that we can see the reflections inside the suit. You see this? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Oh crap! The shock waves hit six minutes later, striking the south face of the hab first and hardest. Specification. Twenty-seven minutes. What do you get here? Okay. With that kind of oh, when, force. When? Even the 1,000 foot depth rate, it says, is 300 meters. After so we're a little ocean. deeper than uh, yeah. <laughs> this thing is rated for. <laughs> only safe havens in Some might say 10 <laughs> times <laughs> deeper, <laughs> if my math is good. Um, redundant oxygen systems, total capacity 56 man hours, carbon dioxide removed by a scrubber. Did you say 56 hours? Yes. You can stay in this suit underwater. For 56 hours because yeah. it scrubs out the carbon dioxide. You have O2 scrubbers, yes. Which, I don't know why you would have to pick up an oxygen bottle then. Like, you just yeah, have... Yeah, like, it's actually kind of preposterous that we're going to have to spend the whole game running from oxygen bottle to oxygen bottle. I'm reminded of this game, um, uh, the one of the few games I've ever gotten an angry letter about my review for. <laughs> oh, yeah. I reviewed this game called Adrift, which was about, like, somebody had screw- you had screwed up and destroyed a space station, and then you have to float through the space station and try to get home and not focus on the fact that your screw-up destroyed the place, uh, space station and killed everybody. Oh, crap! Oh. Right. Hey, buddy, can I help you in some way, or...? Yeah. Oh, no, it was just a hallucination. That's fine. Uh, anyway, uh, in that game, you're in space, right? What the hell? Okay, you're gonna see some stuff. All right. So uh, you maybe space, whoa. And you're in the emergency suit, right? But you spend the entire game, like always. I would say about between sixty and ninety seconds away from suffocating to death. Ugh. Like that is how often you have to go and find another uh, bottle of oxygen or hook yourself up to an oxygen tank to survive. And I'm like. Even if the narrative says there's a leak in my suit, you know, I can hold my breath for 90 seconds. <laughs> Don't have the game kill me after 90 seconds of not having oxygen. That's that's ludicrous. All right, I need to find some oxygen within the, the world of the game. So it's, it is weird to think that the whole idea of limited oxygen is like just completely preposterous. Mm-hmm. And that in real life you would have no trouble surviving in this environment unless the suit was damaged. So, like, unless the O2 scrubber, the the scrubbers, the CO2 scrubbers, have a problem, you're pretty much good for, you know, three days underwater. <laughs> yeah, for a while. Well, no, two and a half days underwater. But that's pretty impressive. Yeah, but you need O2 right, right now. now. Yeah, right now. No, no. Uh, I'm running towards what I think is the O2 display. It looks kind of like the coolant stations that were in uh, the Wolfenstein game I played. In the Wolfenstein game, you get to go to Venus. Return to Compass 1. Uh, to Compass 1? That's what it said on your little screen there. I did not. Um, okay, I did not notice that. I'm not no. Oh, there's the compass at the bottom of the screen. Neat. There's not a tick on it telling me which way I'm supposed to be going, but, you know. 
There we go. I found... Oh, I found a bridge. That should be fun. Yeah, I just played the Wolfenstein game and you get to go to Venus, uh -huh. uh, which is where Hitler lives. You're like, does Hitler live on Venus? Yep, Hitler lives on Venus. So you go and you visit Hitler. Uh, you don't get to kill him, though. I think they're saving that for the third one. Sadly. Uh, and then you, uh, you have to walk around, you know, on this facility that's just off the surface of Venus, so it is unbelievably hot outside, so you're in a coolant suit, and you constantly have to plug in to refill your, uh, your coolant. Mm -hmm. and I think I can blast across this gap. And my first thought was, it's just like these preposterous systems in other games, where I don't believe... Uh-oh, I might have missed it. <laughs> I don't know if it's a problem. I'm just going to follow the tube. No, it's it's fine. Uh, like, where I don't know how you would ever be able to build up an industrial facility like this if every 60 seconds you had to walk back to a unit and plug your uh, suit into it. Yeah, that's a bit ridiculous. Yeah, like, and if you told me um, if they Check set it up within the game world, training. right? It's one of the first things you that. Learn. All of the but workers the they fail, have like hoses on, on their suits your best. that link For them up to a central cooling station, and they're constantly running this around, time, you know, trying not to get tangled itself. up on things with their hoses. Keep breathing. And you have to constantly others, refill because and get the hell you're out. using a portable suit, which is less efficient. Like that would be fine. I would buy that completely. And then you could like kill guys by cutting the hoses on their suits to silently kill dudes, or like shoot the hoses or things like that. That would have been fun, but no. Okay. Yeah, Compass One is the name of one of the. I thought it was referring to my actual compass. It's the name of one of the uh, stations. Okay. And they want to go that because the habitat is taken off water. Apparently there was an 8 Richter scale earthquake 50 miles away. And despite the fact that this is a super high-tech underwater research lab, they're still using the term miles. <laughs> Guys, give it up. You're just going to damage yourselves and your reputation if you keep saying miles. Oh my god, underwater death spiders! I don't know if they're actually death spiders or if they're just some kind of crab, which, Ew. now that I say it out loud, yes. is far more likely that it's just a kind of crab, and I'm really terrified of crabs. Are you terrified of crabs? I've just always been freaked out by crabs. I've but saw not spiders. Movie, you know what? I'm going to say, was it Clash of the Titans that has a giant? No, those are scorpions. Some movie had a giant crab in it when I was a kid, and it stuck with me. <laughs> And that's the only reason I'm scared of crabs. Okay. These are the kind of crabs that I remember from that wonderful video. Go! Oh, okay, there's there's a full size one. I'm just gonna uh, go hide in this corner and hope the crab isn't hungry. I don't think it's gonna eat you. Whoa! Well, it's certainly moving towards me. Yeah, that's not a crab. <laughs> it's got eight legs and pincers. Pretty sure that's a giant underwater death spider. Okay, good. I, I thought I was going crazy. That's right, you better run. Oh no, it's a crab. It is? <laughs> it looks like it has ten limbs, is the thing. I think crabs have ten limbs. I've seen something, but it's got a hard shell. That's a crab. It does have a hard shell. I've That's seen cool. something that looks kind of like that. Have you ever seen that video from like one kilometer below the surface of the ocean? Where like there's this pipe that has a uh, that has a leak in it and so water is just pouring endlessly into this pipe and as a result and so like this crab wanders up close to the pipe and because the pressure differential is so great it is it is just instantaneously crushed and sucked into the pipe oh. by the water pressure <laughs> I've not seen that it's pretty terrifying because it, it shows in real life what they always show in movies happening when there's like a hole in the side of a spaceship. Mm -hmm. And I always think that seems to be preposterous because I feel like, uh, how do I put this? I feel like a the pressure differential between one atmosphere and zero atmospheres isn't going to cause enough air pressure to push an entire human or alien through a thumb-sized hole in a spaceship. I just, I just feel like it can't. Right. I feel like, I feel like the hundred pounds of air pressure on all of us all the time isn't enough to do that. Uh, but the pressure a kilometer below the surface is how many atmospheres of pressure is that? Oh Christ, I don't know. I can't do the math on that. It's a lot. It's a lot. 
Oh god, I, um, which reminds me of Futurama. How many atmospheres? Well, there's like a hundred atmospheres of pressure here. How many atmospheres can the ship take? Well, well it's a spaceship, so between no. one and zero. And zero. <laughs> <laughs> which I brought up after watching Into Darkness. Because oh, yes, the they're fighting this ship, ship fucking underwater. It's like, oh. <laughs> to, to keep the aliens from detecting us. They're frigging they're like aliens. medieval caveman people. <laughs> You can Just hide be in it. orbit. It's fine. They're not going to see you up there. Like, even if they have telescopes, they're not going to have a hard time finding you. They are going to have a hard time. Sir, yes, they are. When it's all not bearing be down on so many levels, it's got to be managed. You so, can't shake the pressure. As someone who's done a bunch of diving, Just make yeah. peace with their it. Representation Don't let it take the wheel. Coral and, you know, crustaceans and the little th the little lichens that cling on to all of these rocks. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. It's pretty accurate? Yeah. Like, this is what it looks like down there? Well, it depends where you are. <laughs> well, of course, yeah. What part of the world you're in. Um, Here's like, my question to you. Yeah. All right? Have you ever been down far enough that it's like what they say about the pitch blackness of the deep sea? Um, Places where light has never, sunlight has never been. <laughs> I have dived in water that's been very dark. Yes. Okay. I remember I was in, I did a river dive and you couldn't see anything down there. Okay. And I got really turned around. I remember that. Um, and I've done some night How dives. How deep was that river? It wasn't, or no, was it wasn't very, it? it was just really, it's like. Oh, it was silty. It was dark, murky water. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and I've done a couple night dives. And it's is it, obviously is it dark. No, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, the coral so looks do different at night. You see different creatures. They come out at night. Oh, it was sweet. awesome. I didn't even yeah. Think about that. Oh, yeah. yeah totally it's weird. I got scared. Again, uh, showing just how much I was a timid child. I got scared off of diving as a kid because, you know, just regular lake diving. Oh, no. Uh, just regular lake diving when I was diving around these rocks out in the middle of the lake. Uh, that I was at. Like, I ran into an eel, Ooh. and the eel did not look happy to see me. <laughs> and that was kind of all of it, t all it took <laughs> to put me off of diving further. Oh, uh, that's too bad. You're missing out, because it's I know. incredible. Like, it every time you tell me one of these incredible. stories about the amazing world of diving, I'm like, maybe I should try diving. Because I mean, you got to be comfortable just... in the water and under the water, because... Well, yeah, I mean, I spend all of my time swimming whenever I can. Yeah. Okay. I love being underwater. I just, yeah. you know, much more, uh, if, if you're telling me, get into water more than like five feet taller than you are, I start to get worried. Okay. I know that's a weird but line. You have, like, you have, you have a breathing apparatus, though. I know. So what are you, what are, what are you worried about when you get in over I your like head, being literally? Able to pull a, I like being able to pull a ripcord on being underwater within one second. Okay, this, yeah, that's... Underwater's great. No, I'm just going to pop out. Yeah, you know what? Maybe don't learn to dive, because <laughs> you do that at depth... You'll die. You'll, <laughs> you can die. You will, you will die if you try to You do can that explode your lungs, so... Oh my God. <laughs> uh, because you're going from five atmospheres to one atmosphere, and that's going to screw you up in a way that going from one atmosphere to zero atmospheres doesn't. That's right. You don't explode when you get blasted out of a spaceship. We know that because in... Uh, uh, because in astronaut training, dudes actually, like, had their, they were in vacuum rooms that were as bad as, you know, exactly the same as the vacuum of outer space, and their There's capsules failed, and they were everything. exposed to vacuum. Has and to it be. sucked, but Second they didn't guessing blow up. Puts lives mm -hmm. And they did survive. So it's best to stick to procedure. Being, uh, step by step. Exposed to vacuum for, like, two So minutes. with an all-hands call, you head straight for okay. Compass 1. Try and reach Zero. surface from comms. Oh, that's weird. Have I ever told you that I have a real problem with second-person narration? <laughs> like the whole, you walk along the floor of the ocean, wondering when you're where the next vision is going to hit you. What? Can you make it back to the station in time? Just, that really bugs me. Like, so, are you just wandering to? around, or are you actually looking for Compass One? I'm looking for Compass One. Okay. Now, if this were a better-designed suit, 
there would be like a heads up display telling me in what direction Compass One was. Mm -hmm. But I. Ah! Oh. Okay, I'm waiting okay, for you're it. Okay, about to see a thing. <laughs> Is it that weird fish thing? Yeah. Jesus. What the hell is wrong with this thing? Doesn't like you. How many times doesn't does like it your need face. to get cut before it figures out that I'm not edible? <sighs> hey, uh, that's the other reason I don't like uh, the idea of diving. Like eels are one thing, but there's monsters under there. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's full on monsters. Down. I have never been eaten by a monster, and all the guys that I've died. It has not. It has not happened. <laughs> but yeah, but you don't go where krakens live. Well, you can't. It's too deep. Whoa! Hello, octopus. Yeah. Okay, great. I got more flares. I got more oxygen. And guess who just found an underwater facility? It was, <laughs> it was me. I found the underwater facility. Uh, all right. Hopefully, hopefully this place won't be full of zombies. I'm kind of. Uh, I'm saying that in the hopes of. Uh, Hopes that, that it will be full of zombies. Well, no, I, no, no. I'm saying if you uh, if you say the thing that's most obvious to happen, then it probably won't happen because the game won't surprise you. So I don't know anything about this game except the logo is like a skull inside a diving suit. Okay. So I'm hoping that that means that you know just a lot of dead people in diving suits. Not we're going to have uh, zombies to deal with. All right, so open door. The oh, you're always supposed to confirm the hatch integrity before opening it. Makes sense. Testing the seal, extracting water. Oh my God, we're From actually the outside. We're draining the water. The structure seemed intact. That's cool. So I figured whoever's inside might. Well, maybe it's okay. Come on, let's. Okay, weird stuff is. Oh, there's a giant computer er error. That's not good. Am I still? But I'm still in the water. Damn it. So I have to manually override even though I'm still in water and the drain didn't work. That's not good. Access to we ran all open. kinds of drills. <coughs> well, because the airlock mm. hasn't drained, has it? Believe no. you know what to expect. Yes, yeah, so you can't. And it turns open out the airlock didn't drain inside it's where it's familiar uh, and you should feel safe. And you can't open that door. Even though I had to. You're going to flood the facility. First few it's steps already amazing. flooded. Oh, okay. He was just... Uh, this is first-person narration. He was just uh, saying it strangely okay. earlier. And it's weird that the narration is someone... Is the character I'm playing reminiscing about the events that I'm playing? Maybe something bad happened in the past also? Maybe, but he seems to specifically be talking. You'll see the subtitles in a second. He seems to specifically be talking about the events that are happening now. <laughs> but he's narrating his own life. Yeah, he's narrating his own life. In the present. In the pre or, again, they're removing immediacy from the story by having their narration happen, uh, like, in retrospect. Which is, again, a really weird way to tell a story. So like do you map. think that half a suit hanging there is a specific call-out to Deep Star Six? Oh, 100%. Okay. That's absolutely a call-out to Deep Star Six. <laughs> like, I, w I would not question that for a second. <laughs> God, Deep Star Six is so much fun. It's, I always kind of forget what happens in that film. I've seen it a handful of times. Yeah. And maybe it's like I end up completing it in Leviathan. With Leviathan? Yeah. Yeah. That's very easy to do. They're incredibly similar movies. We need one more of them of is just about monsters, and one of them is about a thing that's basically the thing, but also alien. <laughs> And that's Leviathan, and that's kind of why Leviathan's a bit of a better movie. I really like Leviathan. Although it doesn't have Miguel Ferrer exploding in a decompression tank. That's so true. That kind of kind of wins in its own way. So these are, like, manually rotate. I feel like this place should have more fail-safes to keep the water out. Like, isn't the whole point of doors like this that every single unit would be individually hermetically sealed? Yeah. Right? That would be yeah. the idea, because so you can just, every if a chamber single... floods, you just yeah. shut it off and you can prevent the water from going further. Getting everywhere else. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems kind of like every single place in this flood. You might say, well, it's an underwater horror game. Of course, every place <laughs> in it flood. If you're walking. Ah! Hey, buddy! It's cool. Just 
Just wanna, just wanna chat. Gotcha! Okay, I, uh, oh. thought it was a zombie, but, uh, no, it was just a, just a ghost. Just a suit? An it's empty a suit just standing there? Or it could be a, do a corpse in a suit. So anytime your character looks at something scary, you? Yeah, like, Jesus he starts Christ. breathing more quickly. How did you get starts... this job if you were so bad at managing <laughs> your emotions? Stress. That's true, like, isn't one of the main jobs of working underwater knowing how to control your breathing? Right. Even I would when you start, so. even when scary stuff is happening? Yeah. Or maybe they're saying this is so far out of his realm of experience that it's okay. overriding his training. Like, I get, like, your heart rate would speed up, certainly, oh, but would you, would you, would you be sucking air <laughs> as quickly? much as you are? Yeah, this guy hyperventilates at the drop of a hat. Not that we're criticizing him. He's going through a very tough time. I get it. Oh, crap. Well, if you didn't think this place was uh, compromised enough, there's one of those giant uh, oh <laughs> underwater oh death spiders. God. Yeah, that's... One, two, okay, let me just count. Okay, so no, it only has six legs and it's pincers, so I was all wrong. It's a crab. I've actually, I have a photo of a crab that looks somewhat similar. To that. To that. So it's like one of those under, like deep underwater rock crabs or whatever that can be like I saw it the in size Hesperia. of a Volkswagen bug. Yeah, <laughs> I like. I mean, they were big. I remember yeah. at the aquarium they were pretty large. It's yeah, a I photo, saw a crab in an aquarium, and I mean, this is maybe I just haven't gone to good enough aquariums, but I saw a crab with like a four foot or six, no, four or five foot leg span once. And I'm like, that's a nightmare. Yeah. You're describing my nightmares, uh, <laughs> aquarium. And then I saw an otter, and I was happy because otters are great. Oh my god, they're the best. They're so good. They're so well, this fun and like so happy and playful. Yeah, like literally the entire time um, they had built a slide. What happened to that guy? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The, the they had built a slide for it, like a water slide with in rocks. Where the water was constantly uh, going down the slide for it to play on. Mm -hmm. And all it did was just slide down the slide and then run back up the rocks and then dive down the slide over and over and over again. Oh, fun. Like, that was its whole day. And I'm like, yay. Yeah, um, when I walked up to the corpse, he, there was his cell phone was flashing. Yeah, I saw that. But then I couldn't pick it up. I couldn't interact with the cell phone. Oh, it's and he can't really pull clear. him out of there? No, he can't grab him. What if I slashed at the cell phone to try and like cut it loose from its uh No, I'm just batting his leg. All right, I'm just batting around the legs of a corpse. That is <laughs> That is not a cool go. thing to do. I mean, I really do like the look of this. I really enjoy the underwater look. It's got slightly creepy music. I mean, I'm often one to say, "I don't want any music in video games." I don't want you to lie to me and try to control my emotions, but uh, I, I'd lie, be lying if I said it wasn't effective in horror games. So there was another aftershock, which means I'm hoping it's cleared the spider away from the door and I can get through. But that, ah! No! Just woke him up! I hate him so much. I hate that guy. You shouldn't yep. be able to move like that. That's just not cool. Can you blow <sighs> stuff up with your flares? Uh, no, you can't blow stuff up. You can just, you know, bother it a little. Uh, okay, got more oxygen, good. But yeah, so anyway, I, I was gonna make that story. So, um, I didn't like to have to stop every 90 seconds finding an oxygen tank. And honestly, the game's, uh... Oh, crap! Oh, this thing. I don't think it's an octopus. You think it's a squid? It looks more like a squid? Oh, or a squid. cuttlefish? Well, it's, it's spitting ink at us. What, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know. But it's just, I'm just saying its shape doesn't look like an octopus. No, that's true, because it's got that pointy head part and it's got the really flappy legs. Yeah, that looks more like a squid. That's to definitely me. a squid, you're right. Oh no, another person was killed. 
And this one had their arm get cut off. I'm almost out of oxygen. Because, you know. Uh. Oh, we got a data pad. Oh, I think we did get a data pad off that guy. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, see, we got... It just, I didn't notice the thing that I was telling. We're supposed to find all of the corpses and get all of their data pads. For some reason. Gotcha. Okay, I have commenced the part of the game where my character goes insane and starts seeing things. <laughs> what? So yeah, I didn't like that game's uh, penchant for making you run around and do repetitive tasks and having a terrible map that, where you couldn't find what was going on and where you were supposed to go. Uh, and then the guy just, you know, sent me a lot of harassment on Twitter. Oh. Over his game that he he Jeez. was very fond of. Okay, like, well, oh, like yeah. I get it, but I respect your desire to be fond of your game, but you're not addressing the specific issues that I had with it. Yeah. Oh, I went back and I found a dude's ID. I was hoping to find air, but uh, no, there was no air. Yeah, so that was the uh, creator behind uh, uh, what do you call it? Adrift. Hmm. Who I later found out was uh, a guy. So, um, there was a, uh, there was a very scandalous thing that happened with the Xbox One when they were releasing it. I don't know if you remember this, but the Xbox One had a disastrous, uh, announcement. Like, when they, they announced the Xbox One was Reaching happening. the surface was off the uh, table. I think I remember or that. Otherwise. Yeah, it was just like, they so had a system simple. where... Uh, Wait, go back. Hold on, go back and look at that other big screen. I can't, uh, a cutscene oh. started. But I will. I was down to 3% oxygen, so I was looking for a tank before I went back and investigated some. Reckless endangerment of flora and fauna violates international agreements. I have no oxygen left. <laughs> That's not good. Ah, there we go. There's an oxygen station. So anyway, it had a famously awful launch. I'm about to... Oh, wow. The screen's going all wonky because I'm out of oxygen. That's great. Uh, but anyway, at least you don't die instantly like in so frigging many other games. Yeah, right? Okay, so. Um, let's just look at the map. Okay, so we're in Compass 1, which is offline. The evac pod is offline, but it's online in Compass 2. So what you're supposed to do is get on a tram, get to Compass 2, take the evac pod. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what happened was they um, had this disastrous launch where it's like, in order to play any game, you're going to have to buy a game. But then you're going to have to authorize yourself and tie the game you bought to your Microsoft account, even though it's on a disc. You can't resell it, and only you can own it. And you can only lend it to a friend who you've previously authorized, and you can only ever authorize five people per game. Yeah, and then Sony was like, here's how you share a game yeah, exactly. with, with a PlayStation. And you just... So, <laughs> yeah. I know, that was so good. Here you go. Have one. <laughs> and they won it. It was as much as the... Uh, the time Sony had defeated Sega with its famous Sega did their launch of the Saturn and they talked about all of the, the various... Normally the Saturn habs are lit up top to bottom and all the time. I think it was the first E3. A like lot of the gear was waterproof. All of Some of the lights the and monitors were still running. Out at this time and blah, 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 so it blah, wasn't blah. dark, but it's fading. Blah, blah, blah. So the head of Sony like the whole thing's on life support. And he looks at the microphone, like $299, walks away. And that was his entire presentation. <laughs> We're a hundred dollars less. That's it. Well, plenty. Anyway, so during all of that game ownership lending fiasco, a thing that got covered less, right? But that was equally annoying was everyone's like, uh, my Xbox can play my Xbox 360 can play Xbox games. Uh, you know, ew. What is, how am I going to play, am I going to be able to play my old Xbox 360 games? Am I going to be able to play my Xbox games? What is reverse compatibility for this? And, uh, and so this guy said, we have a, don't worry, Microsoft has a, uh, a solution for people who want to play Xbox 360 games. Get an Xbox 360. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And so he was a dick for no reason. Like, he could have said... Um, obviously it's something we can look at. Oh my god, at. look Picture at the floor! Itself. Look at the floor? Did you notice that? What? It's the Kyber from The Shining. It is? But just blue instead of red. It is! That's so great! <laughs> Don't look so back. Yeah. 
the guy, he could have been, just said, that's not one of our priorities at the moment, but it's something we'll look at in the future. Right? There's any number of ways he could have been diplomatic, but he was a dick about it for no reason, and he had to resign the next day from Microsoft. Because the entire internet turned on him. Well, for, yeah, you know, it's understandable. Fairly understandable reasons. Wait, how did I get into this area? I thought I walked through this way, but there's no door there anymore. I think my character might already be dead, and this is his underwater purgatory. But anyway, <laughs> I think I died right when I first fell at the beginning of the game. So, uh, anyway, that guy who was a dick for no reason and it ruined his career, I later found out he's the guy who created a drift. Oh. And a drift was supposed to be a metaphor for the way he blew up his own career and had to recover from. Well, it sounds like he didn't do a great job recovering if he's still a dick about stuff. I know, if he's still being a dick to people on the internet. I mean, I'm not... Okay, yeah, that was a fantasy. That's why the door disappeared. <laughs> um, yeah, if he's still being a dick to people on the internet, maybe he didn't learn his lesson. And this game didn't serve its purpose. Now, oh, what's over there? It's uh, stars. That's weird. Oh, cute! Save me, Mr. Taka. That's very strange. Is that an actual or a fake Game Boy game? <laughs> this is all, like, it's a good bit of uh, production design. Then again, the Drift had good production design, too. God damn it, guys. Would you stop frigging appearing out of nowhere? Ugh. Anyway. Uh, although the, the most entertaining thing uh, was, and here's uh, something they did in a Drift that I thought was hilarious and I did a little video about, which is, so you're in outer space, right? Uh, you're orbiting the Earth, so not that far out, but you're in outer space. You're orbiting the Earth around this shattered um, space station. Hi. Something about to jump out at me. It's gone completely black again. Okay, I'm having a lot of hallucinations. Like, yeah. Is 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 this the <laughs> it's volume you're of breathing so hard? <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Is this a nitrogen narcosis thing? Like this of volume of a hallucinations? Is that what we can expect? Or is this excessive? It's pure oxygen. You're not getting nerfed because it's no nitrogen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But anyway, so yeah. So you you spend a lot of time skirting around the outside of the. Um, the station, right? Because you're trying to get into different areas and you have to unlock things on the outside. It's, you know, it's a well-designed station. And all of the pieces of it are still, you know, jagged and scary. And it's it's a well-designed location. So I go outside and I notice, oh, it's, that's neat. Like, it's daytime. I can look at the earth and see the cities on the earth. And it's kind of fun. And I can see my shadow being projected onto the walls of this uh, facility because the sun's there. And then I turned around and I'm like, they forgot to put a sun in there. Huh. They forgot to put the sun in outer space. Like, the most notable thing in outer space, the sun, uh, they neglected to make it part of the thing. So I would do this, I did a video where I'm like looking right at my shadow, I turn 180 it's degrees, relentless. and there's just space. I mean, the isolation is like, how do you forget unnatural. Oh, you're in a big rush? Little I don't know. Little problems start to yeah. spiral. Oh, glowing stuff, you right? It's stuff for you to pick up or investigate. Yeah, it was awesome. packed pretty quick. It's Some weird, find ways to cope, uh -oh. others struggle. Uh oh, this is a problem. So, do we have any sense of what the mission is, or? It's literally just get out of here. It's. I mean, I don't want to compare this too much to uh, a drift, but in a drift, your job was literally just to get out, to get a uh, an escape pod running so you could escape. Okay. And here, it's just like, get an escape pod running so you can escape. We might discover another mission as we go, but I think, I, I suspect that the game's plan is to run you through the various shattered stations on your way to escape and have some horror happen along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't speak to what this game is about because again, this is the first time I've booted it up. But I doubt we're going to find a temple to Dagon at the floor of the ocean. <laughs> you might want to find a temple to Dagon at the floor. Like, honestly, right now, you want what to happen to be an earthquake was caused as an elder god was waking up. And it turns out you built your facility right on top of his temple. Like, that's what you want, right? 
Sure. Be honest. Isn't that that's, what we all want? That, exactly. Well, no. And I mean, I'm not going to say I don't want that too. I have no expectation that's going to happen. This might just be a game about you being underwater and being horrified by the dangers of being underwater mm -hmm. and also occasionally scared by the phantoms and the visions of the people who were killed by the earthquake. Unlike in Adrift, it doesn't seem to be your fault that everybody's dead, but rather the fault of the person who built the... Uh, uh, who built an underwater facility and every room had frigging hoses that would let water in <laughs> if, like, this valve on the outside burst. Like, that's just, that's just a bad way to build an underwater facility. So is that a living squid or is that a dead squid? Because he's not moving. But I've been burned before. Alright, I just bounced a flare off of him. I feel like he would have woken up. I guess, yeah, I might be away. dead. So I'm going to explore that room, and then we'll check back the other way. But no. You better not attack me, you jerk. Hey, it's a dude in a suit! Hey, dude in a suit! I found another person. Oh, and I got their oxygen. Nice. I mean, I'm sad to steal the... No, he wasn't dead. He was just waiting for me to investigate that corpse before he attacked me. Because he knows he's a villain in a video game. Watching life go by inside the yeah. bubble oh. is cruel. Squid. Yeah. The ones that I don't care know if you know this get ahead, start but learning to live dicks. without you. Oh, he's wrapped so around behind you. First, yeah, I know. Whether or not you're that. really gone. Run away. But no. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to jump out of a hole in the actual facility. Mm hmm. Cool. Seriously, do they call it getting narked? Narked. Or is that just your thing? No, no, it's just, that's what, yeah. That, that's a saying? That's a thing. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's, just, it's a very boss saying. Narked? Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, I just got narked. Yeah, Dude. also known Would I you stop doing this? I forgot, it's also called Rapture of the Deep. What? Yeah. Because of the, because of the blissed out feeling? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to complain too much, because I'm obviously enjoying being underwater and having this experience, but seriously... I'm spending a lot of time rapidly clicking my mouse button because a squid is attacking me. Well, why don't you stab him? I keep stabbing him. Like, that's what's happening. So yeah, digging this knife into him. And it doesn't seem to bother him as much as you'd think it would. I just dropped my knife. I think I'm dead. <laughs> I just got killed. What? By a giant. What just happened? Did you, well, it looks like... You, ran you, out of... you lose some water every time one of these dudes attacks you. Uh, water. You lose some air every time one of these dudes attacks you, right? O2 equals so life. I... Don't waste it. I know, but it's like... They didn't give me that whole... The screen was getting fuzzy and I have to, you know, quickly save the day. They just immediately killed me while I was being attacked by it. Mm. Also, if I frigging... I mean, I don't know the biology of squids. But if I drive a knife directly into the side of a squid and, you know, puncture it really deep, I feel like even if that doesn't kill it, it might not want to keep trying to kill me. Yeah, I don't now, know. I don't know a lot about squid psychology. <laughs> I skipped all of those classes in college. You know how everyone in... Uh, uh, have, everyone in Canada has to take classes on squid psychology, that famous thing about Canada? Well, I skipped all of those classes, and I got an incomplete. And I'm not proud of that, but it did happen. Right? And so now, I'm looking at these killer squids, and I don't know how they think. I don't know what they're doing. Watching life go by they attacking me? inside the bubble. Unfortunately, uh, when you unlock a, um, a the ones thing that care, from a character, get a head it doesn't start get learning saved to live without you. It. So, so uh, the you grief have to, comes you first, die and go back to whether or not level. you're really gone. Which isn't a big problem. Boom. And now the guy's being regretful about going on an underwater job <laughs> while uh, his family is not underwater with him. Dude, think about that before you go on the underwater job. Well, maybe it was really lucrative and he needed the money. That can Damn it! Dick ran around behind me. All right, so now you're right. I'm going to start taking the fight to the squid. How are we doing oxygen? 62% oxygen. Yeah! Yeah! You're right. I should have been taking the fight to the squids this whole time. <laughs> yeah, like this whole... 
nonsense about. There you go. Oh yeah. I'm calling this video Squid Aside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I reset the breaker and all of the lights work again. And no one's getting electrocuted because at least one thing was built correctly. <laughs> Alright, where's the oxygen? Is that another squid? I just killed a squid. Well, oh my now you gotta God, kill another squid. one. Oh, I hope not. Alright, did I just... Uh, I need to get some oxygen, then we'll go upstairs. Then we'll see what we can do. Of course I got attacked by that other squid. What is this? You know, with their freaky monster beak mouths. And their tentacles. Each of which has its own nervous system. And has a different personality. Which, that's weird. That's something I read a little while ago. It creeped me out. What? You'll see. Apparently they're technically cuttlefish. <laughs> oh man. According to the that game. Sucks. I told ya! Yeah. That sucks. That totally sucks. This is not why we're here to play this game. We're here to like just enjoy an undersea adventure. This combat is awkward as hell and not satisfying. <laughs> and it's really difficult to time defenses against cuttlefish attacks. Like, in VR, it might be clearer how far away they are, but I'll be honest with you, just playing this on the TV, I don't have a great idea of the size of the cuttlefish, so it's hard to tell how far away from me they are. Well, I guess just when don't turn your back on one seems to be the, uh... A good idea, yeah. The rule of thumb here. Well, this one I have to, or else he won't get triggered. Right. But from now on, I will do Well, do you even have to go in there and pick this up? Well, I was right now. You don't. don't. So yeah, maybe I just avoid this Maybe you should just fish. stop doing this part of the game every time. <laughs> if, <laughs> if it's going to keep beating me up, yeah. Watching life go by Except. inside the bubble is cool. Yes, yes, inside the bubble, life going by is cool. The ones yeah. that care get a head start learning to live without you. So the grief I've, comes I've first, a few times whether now. or not you're really gone. Wow. So he's saying what really sucks about going is that, uh... Aha! No! This dude snuck up behind me! I mean, I know that's what they always do, so I shouldn't be surprised, but... Alright, how do I get around? I hate you so much. I would like a faceplate integrity meter, so I could know how close I am to death. That's not really realistic, though, so I get why I can't have that. All right, so now what I have to do is I have to get past two cuttlefish. I have to turn on the um, I have to turn on the elevator's power source. Then I have to fly the elevator. I really thought I had uh, gotten that. You know. Can I just stab these guys high or something? Well, why not? Well, it's just they don't let you choose where you're hitting. I just, oh, I have no oxygen. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> oh my god. I might be cartoonishly bad at this game. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing, you just keep making the same mistakes over and over again. I know, because, but one of them is that, you know, a friggin' cuttlefish sneaks up on me and starts attacking me from behind. Yeah, like, I here's, try to avoid here's them the and it thing. Work. Hold on, hold on. Go, please, go. The next time we start this all over again, don't go. Which is right now. No, I'm not going to go down that path. No, and have the go straight to the room where the elevator is. Don't okay. bother going over to get the flare. Just immediately make your way over to the wall panel to turn on the electricity. Okay, and then just go straight up. Yeah, like I don't know why you keep bothering with this flare that because you don't Because there's use. oxygens and flares and stuff, and I thought I needed them. Yeah, but this is the fourth time we're doing this. All right, you're making a strong point. Alright, here we go. Reset circuit. Alright, now I'm blasting as fast as I can over to the elevator. Hoping the colored little fish stay distracted by the, uh, by the flare. There's a, there's an angler fish outside who is trying to break in. Mm -hmm. Which seems to me like he should not be able to get through those windows. Oh, he's I big. I don't know a lot about how angler fish works. Yeah, I think he's probably going to break in though. That seems implausible to me. 
you know, this isn't the world of deep blue sea. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> Actually, you're right. This might be. Wouldn't it be an amazing if, in a twist, this was set in the world of deep blue sea, and there were super sharks? Running, I've seen death around. before, but not like this. It was funny. I was up here. Um, the I, impacts I, usually what more I've always abstract. Loved about uh, this is intimate. Um, deep blue it's like sea when you pass an accident on the freeway. Their attempts to all the possibilities um, run wild. Set the stakes of what happens if the sharks like get away. On, or there'll be super intelligent sharks out in the uh, ocean. On. Okay. Back to normal. And <laughs> oh, that's nice. I mean, is that is that actually a problem? We have no reason to believe that any kids that this shark has are also going to be super intelligent. Like, you use genetic engineering to increase its brain size, but we don't know if they can pass those genes on. Mm -hmm. right, so, but even if it can... Okay, there are super smart sharks. And... Like, <laughs> is that going to make it so they can't be killed by nets? You know? Like, I don't, I don't really understand what the threat is to people who aren't in the water, which is most people most of the time. Yeah. I mean, I don't even understand what threat they pose to people who are in the water. Because, you know, they, they can't hurt boats, really. So, what, what exactly is the threat posed? Like, I know all of you people want to survive this experience and get out alive. I get that. But beyond that, I don't really see that you're establishing a big threat. Like, at the end of the movie, the Doctor created... They're all safe. And the Doctor who created the shards like, no... I have to kill myself to make sure that the sharks don't escape. And I'm like, I don't know that you did. <laughs> no, she didn't. No, like, I think you can just let the shark escape. It's fine. You know? A, a super intelligent shark still doesn't have thumbs. Okay? It can't breathe it's, air. It still can't breathe air. It can't walk on land. No matter how pissed it is at people, there's very little threat it poses to the world. You know, so, okay, so, what the news is, yeah, okay, they're still telling us just to get to Compass 3. Sorry, Compass 2. Well, that's what we're doing. Okay, what if we, oh, we got a computer station here. Nice. With a severed arm. Oh, no, it wasn't a severed arm, it was just a glove. I would like to reset the hazard level. Boom. Now we can go back to that red door downstairs. Oh, come on! All right, that time the ghost got. Most of these ghosts I'm expecting and they don't really bother me, but that time the ghost got, okay. Well, my madness just took an interesting turn, <laughs> as you're about to see. Okay. The fact that my character has gone nuts is Jesus. Uh, becoming more visually evident. Uh-huh. Yeah, right? Yeah. I don't even know where I'm supposed to go. Maybe back through the door? Like, the whole room is turned sideways, and there's all sorts of stuff blocking me from going anywhere. Right. This is very strange. Let's just <laughs> go back through the door. Pass. <laughs> I know it has passed before, but, you know, this friggin' ghost is still just standing here. And every time I look at them, my breathing speeds up, because, again, I, I, honestly, okay. Be honest with me here. You, you run into a ghost. Yeah. Right. You're going to freak out. Your breathing's going to speed up. I agree. All of that is going to happen. Now, let's say immediately after running into that ghost, you run into a second ghost who looks just like him. I, right? Yeah. Like, I see where you're you'd going with you this. You freak out the second time. Yeah, but there's a point but, at which you stop getting freaked out about running into the same ghost. That's what I'm saying. Over and over like, again. Well, let's say the ghost shows up a third time five minutes later. Yeah. And then a fourth time... And a fifth time, <laughs> at a certain point, like, you're not going to be freaking out about the ghost, right? Well, at this, I, like, he's just, like, he's, he's scaring you. It's a jump scare. You're not actually, like, yeah. afraid of the ghost. Also, It's just, just he's just being startled. Yeah. So yeah, I just realized we're supposed to like... use the desks as a bridge to get over to that door. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, so what you have is... Um, uh, a startle reaction. There's actually like yes. there's a psychological 
term for this. Term for the startle reaction. For like an over exaggerated startle reaction. Okay. Yeah. And that's what's happening. And that's what, yeah, you, you have that problem. Okay, I get it. Okay, apparently now we're just walking through the whole place on its side. <laughs> This, this dream is not ending. Maybe it got moved over. There was an earthquake. Yeah, but I feel like the whole place shifted. would have shook a lot more mm -hmm. had there been an earthquake while we were in that little room. Yes, we made it. Uh, yeah, so, all right. I think we're going to start wrapping this up now. Sure. As an underwater expert, <laughs> is this, does this make you feel like, is it, is it capturing the feeling with the slow movement? The fish everywhere. Yeah, the I'd say like, they've done a... the feel of underwater at all? Yeah, I'd say they've done a pretty good job with the whole... Yeah, kind of... The look of it and the... Look and feel of, like, an underwater lab, I guess. Um, the fact that you're breathing oxygen... <laughs> uh, it <laughs> that's be... going to keep bothering you? That well, that's cause... just oxygen and not air? Well, also, it would you would be suffering from oxygen toxicity. Because you're having way too much oxygen. Well, it's oxygen, it becomes toxic at depth. Oh, really? Yeah, and so that's right, why... That's, you were telling me about the helium mixture, right? Yeah, that's there. why, like, yeah, you breathe Trimix or Heliox or something like that when you're going really, really deep, so... But narcosis is a really good word. So, <laughs> yeah. I get why they went with that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... I guess. It's got a good look. It's got a, it's good, got look. a good feel. Yeah. Yeah. The jump scares are fun, but, you know, they're, they're not very deep. Well, it's not like you're experiencing so existential horror. Well, I think you... We're just like... Maybe. Every now and then a ghost shows up and tries to freak me out. <laughs> and does a pretty good job of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's that that is really the majority of what's happening. I think the existential horror is that you're trapped in an underwater lab. At the bottom of the ocean and you're probably gonna die of oxygen starvation at uh, some point in the near future. Or you're gonna get killed by a friggin' squid uh, cuttlefish. Because <laughs> cuttlefish are the frigging worst. I can't stress the amount that cuttlefish are apparently the frigging worst. Oh I dived with a cuttlefish and followed me along on my whole dive. And was it was it cute? It was adorable. Yeah, was it? And it was just super curious about what you were. So it was like, I'm gonna hang out with her. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. And then I ate cuttlefish later that day. All right. Well, now you're just making me sad. Why would you tell me that part of the story? I didn't eat my cuttlefish friend. Okay. Good. I ate well, a you didn't say that. Different came cuttlefish. Sixty, seventy-five. Once the whole thing staffed up. Okay. So with just twenty Separate, of us, there's unrelated couple fish already as this far as you know. hollow yes. quality. You don't know like that it wasn't dropping that by the office when everyone no. was gone. I can't weekend. say for sure that, that my buddy wasn't related to my delicious there. dinner that I had later <laughs> that they day. They did their best to keep us happy. So is cuttlefish delicious? Yeah, it was good. Okay. I mean, if how you don't it, I'm like, I'm just gonna ask. How was it prepared? Um, I don't remember this. Like, it was quite a number of years ago. Oh, okay. So I don't. I just remember enjoying. So the there was a red. I'm back in the uh, the room that I kept getting murdered by squid in. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm. I, there was a red door down there that we couldn't go through earlier, right? Um, I don't remember. I'll be honest. Well, let's with you. What about that? Can you I, unblock the blocked door? The blocked door? No. Oh. No, okay. you can't move stuff. Which oh. Is weird, because I'm in. I'm essentially in power armor, right? <laughs> like it's not like I'm moving. The, yeah, like, and I'm not moving this with my own strength. They're like actuators and motors and stuff in this, right? Uh, yeah, it has a propulsion feature. Yeah. I, think I keep that expecting that to... glass to explode. I know, yeah, hey. you're totally going to have to fight the anglerfish. Oh, this... So you know there's a, uh, a tiny, tiny anglerfish. But anyway, did I ever tell you that, um, so do you, do you remember the James Bond movie that has one of these suits in it? Oh my god, no. It's for your eyes only. Okay. Uh, I've never seen they, it. They go, they're salvaging an underwater thing, like a code-breaking device from a ship mm -hmm. that hit a mine. And he gets attacked by a dude wearing one of these suits. And I'm like, huh, that was weird. So years and years... I mean, I saw that when I was a kid. I love that movie. It's a, it's a wonderful movie, right? Here's something strange. When I'm watching the, mo uh, when I'm watching the movie again years later, I just picked up a... Uh, 
a toy penguin. That's cute. <laughs> uh, I'm going to check out my database. Uh, oh, different characters have different uh, personal items that you can pick up and find. Aw, fun. That's cute. I'm still sad they're dead, though. But anyway, uh, so what I was getting at was, so years years and years later, I'm reading this comic book uh, from uh, an issue of 2000 AD, right? And there's a story where a, uh, a ship gets hit by a mine with, like, a code... Or no, it wasn't hit by a mine. It was looking for something... They were looking for something else. But the point is, a ship goes underwater, and a spy is dispatched to find what was inside it. And when he's down there, it gets attacked by a dude in one of those Newt-style suits with clippers and pincers and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, did James Bond rip off this comic book? <laughs> That came out, like, uh, a couple of years before the movie. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting, because it's like, I don't think of them as being, uh, you know, guys who rip a lot of stuff off, but maybe. Because the, that kind of content is in none of the James Bond supporting material. Right. And none of the original texts. Okay, I can't see a way out of this room. You can't get out that door? I just can't get through that doorway. It's too blocked up, and I can't pick up the items. Well, I'm going back out the way you came in. Oh, no, I'm going to. It's just, you know, I guess I was thinking that because this is the red door that I was able to open by going through that whole ridiculous gauntlet, I thought there would be something of significance behind it other than a plush toy. Guess not. Hmm. Are you sure Methane you can't hydrate. move that stuff? Yeah, no, there's no way to interact with items in the game. I see, like, uh... I mean, I'll go back and try hitting him with a knife. There's nothing to lose by doing that. Also, given the layout of that room and the door, there should be yeah. just another way in there. I know, right? Yeah, no, you can't hit stuff with your knife. It's just not happening. All right, so let's begin the uh, long and arduous process of signing off. Okay. Uh, you've given your final thoughts, which is this is... It, it captures the feel, yeah. if not the reality of uh, being underwater, really deep underwater. Yeah. I'm finding it to be like, except for my problems with the cuttlefish, I am finding it an extremely playable game. Like it's very easy to control. Up until now, we haven't hit any uh, like dead zones where it wasn't clear what we were supposed to do next. Mm -hmm. Right? So I think it's largely solid on that front. Can I break this glass? Because the anglerfish just, angler fish just left. You know, up until this point, I've had a very, you know, solid experience with the game, which is why I'm sad that we're uh, ending at such a low point. But overall, I've enjoyed it. I think it's... I, I'm glad that I got a chance to play this one, because, let's face it, I might never have played this otherwise if it wasn't for this feature. And i got to say that uh, I am really looking forward to taking another look at this once I get a VR helmet for my uh, computer. Mm-hmm. And to see what this is like when, you know, you are actually in the suit. Yeah. Like that, I feel like that's going to be cool. Yeah, agreed. All right. And hey, uh, if I get it before Christmas, you can come over to the house and try it when you're in town. Cool. So I will let you know. All right. So I've been the Hidden Object Guru. I've been DM. I want to thank you for coming along on this journey with us. Uh if you had a good time and you want to hear more from us, you can drop by the AVOD podcast where we talk horror movies, or you can check the buttons for uh, subscribing to this channel or having another video recommended to you. Let's see. I think that's that. Would you like to plug anything? Hint, hint. Plug that thing. <laughs> um, I guess if you like the sound of my voice, you can listen to me ramble on about terrible romance novels. It's a podcast I co-host called Chicks and Dicks, uh, and you can find that um, at, well, what's my, <laughs> chicksanddicks.com. <laughs> yeah. Or just go to the oh, no, AVOD, sorry, there's a link. Sorry, chicksanddicks.ca. I don't even know my own web address. There was uh, a yeah. there was a <laughs> drop we could go down in the other room. Oh. We were only supposed to go back down there to get a bonus item. That wasn't uh, the direction we were supposed to go in. Right, okay. Okay, there you go. Uh, yeah, and I encourage people to do that too. All right, so I guess that's that. Uh, thanks for, uh, thanks again, and we will. Oh, the guy teleported to the outside of the glass. Um, yeah, <laughs> and once I get my VR helmet, I'll check back here for more narcosis so I can, like, ha try and have the full experience. Looks like uh, he tried to then, break in. 
Yeah, I know. Wow. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to say au revoir. Okay, I just started recording again so people can see this. Did you? You're about to see it in the stream, and you're okay. going to say, what did I just see? Um, and, are you talking about yep. the old-timey It's an old-timey old -timey -timey oh, wow. diving suit. Wow. Also, also, there's a corpse looks like that over here whose mouth keeps opening and closing. Talking, and the squid was on his face when you walked in yep. there. All right, I've got the timing on uh, killing squids a little better. Is his mouth opening and closing because there's like a fish inside his mouth? I don't, I don't know. That's messed up. All right, I'm sorry to come back. Oh, I realized we never did a quiz this entire stream. Do you have a quiz question you want to give them? Um. Uh. No, because we already talked about both these touch sticks and Leviathan. <laughs> You're right. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, okay. Actually, I will do a quiz. Uh, who survives at the end of Leviathan? Oh. Which of the characters, and you can't say Meg Foster because she was never underwater. Which of the characters who were in the underwater facility survived to the end of the movie Leviathan? Be the first commenter below this video to mention it, and you won a prize. This time we're leaving for real. I was just really freaked out by that old-timey <laughs> diving suit. <laughs> 